Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is the quarter three update for BISC. Quarter three 2020 update for BISC. We are going to talk about what's been happening over the past couple of months and how things are going now and plans for the upcoming few months, short term, midterm future of the project. We're going, to do, we're going to do this a little bit differently from the past couple of uh, updates that we've, quarterly updates that we've had. Uh, those were presented by C. Beams, Chris Beams. Uh, he kind of ran through the whole thing on his own. This time we're going to segment it by each major function. Each team lead will give an update on from their end um, that they've structured and come up with over the past few days. Um, so it's, it's going to basically follow this plan. We're going to start out with a little bit of a, of a pulse, just so you get an idea of how the project has been going, trading, how that's been going, activity on the, on the network, just to give a, a little bit of uh, an idea of the momentum uh, with the project and the network. And then we'll jump into the uh, functional updates by team. And then we'll close with a, with a Q&A where anybody can comment, question, uh, whatever they'd like to ask or find out more about. So just jumping right into it with the uh, trading activity on the network, this is perhaps the nicest view of this right now. The constant growth that we've been seeing has continued over the past couple of months. Uh, there was a bit of a damper after March, which is that spike you see with 116, that's 116 trades per day on average throughout the month of March. Uh, Right after that, we had uh, the security vulnerability, uh, which kind of was a bit of a downer, uh, to put it lightly. But we were lucky to, I think, recover from that quite well. And uh, we're seeing you know, trading activity pick back up again. And um, so that's nice. However, volume is a bit of a mixed bag. We have, um, I think, a good trend with fiat volume. Uh, particularly in the U.S. dollar, which the market, which we'll see in a, more details on in a moment when I go when we go through the growth uh, element of this presentation. Um, so fiat in general has been doing well. Altcoins not so much. Uh, flat, the trending down, uh, and of course with altcoins and BISC, we're referring primarily to Monero, and we're doing a few things to uh, to try to uh, to stem that and um, um, get get Monero back. On the, on the map for BISC. And we'll go more into that. I think Christoph will, will speak a little bit about that uh, in the development section. Let me check to make sure that there aren't any people waiting real quick. Okay, there's one person waiting. Okay, um, this slide, one second. This slide, I put it here mainly as a an indication of the anecdotal momentum of BISC. Uh, I've been seeing a number of these tweets lately. I'm not sure if they mean too much. I don't want to draw too much into them, but uh, they are nice to see. Uh, just as visual uh, indications of BISC and its mission seeming to grow every day, uh, especially lately. Um, you know, people using BISC uh, primarily as their own, as their only exchange, their only means of trading Bitcoin, um, both because privacy and those sorts of principles, as well as in the case of the guy on the bottom left, um, price uh, and speed, uh, which can often be uh, better than other options, at least when it comes to um, cash out fees in this case or the, the length of time to KYC yourself with a traditional exchange. So if you're a user who already understands BISC, if you're a contributor who's already been uh, has been working on it for a while or if you're someone interested in contributing, it's I think an exciting time to become a part of the project or contribute to it in some way and um, we'll be talking more about that, how you can get involved in the various elements of BISC over the course of the next few minutes. So yeah, with that, I think we can uh, continue to our first uh, 
uh, our first uh, team lead presentation. First off, it's all yours. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Okay, uh, yeah. Hi, hello. No, uh, maybe maybe the first slide, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, hello, everyone, also from the development team. Um, um, yeah, a lot, a lot happened actually in the last quarter uh, on the development side. We had um, 17 developers contributing uh, to four releases in total. Um, and there were lots of changes, of course. Uh, to give you an idea what we are focusing on in the last couple of months, um, I, I want to pick out five items I I'm going over um, in the next couple of minutes uh, to, to show you what we are uh, focusing on, uh, what's, what's our priorities, or what was our priorities, and uh, in, in the end, I want to talk about um, what's coming next um, and what, what, what we are focusing on next quarter and um, the time after. Yeah, can you, can you um, flip to the next slide? Uh, yeah, as Steve already mentioned, um, our um, security incident uh, in April. So one of our focus uh, was, or priorities was to repay the victims. Um, for that, of course, we had to development, uh, we had to do some development to make this possible. And the repayment started last quarter. Um, and um, we repaid so far roughly 10% um, of the lost funds. Um, that depends, of course, uh, on the trading volume on BISC, uh, as the payout is a, a percentage of the Bitcoin phase, fees paid. So yeah, so that, that was an important part, um, what we did um, last quarter. Um, yeah, can, can you uh, flip to the next slide? The second thing we are focusing on right now and we are focusing is to reduce mediation and arbitration cases. So uh, if you trade on BISC, if everything goes fine, um, you can uh, um, finalize the trade together with your trading peer and that, that's all. But uh, there are cases, um, maybe the, the trading peer is not responding anymore, where a mediation case or an arbitration case is necessary. And uh, to be able to scale BISC, um, in the upcoming time, um, we have to further reduce this mediation arbitration cases. Yeah, um, we are working on different fronts um, uh, to, to do that. And, and one uh, thing we introduced recently is that we are now also suggesting uh, a deposit percentage that is based on the volatility of the market you are uh, creating an offer for. Uh, that should help um, to reduce uh, the chance that um, your trading, a trading peer is doing an option trade. And you have to wait for forever uh, until the, the trade goes into arbitration. So not, not forever, but you have to wait longer than necessary. Um, yeah, can you flip to the next slide? Yeah, another priority is, um, and was and is, to increase liquidity and in our main, to make this possible in our main markets uh, for payment methods with a higher chargeback risk, uh, we re rely on account signing, or we call it account signing. Uh, it means that um, you need to have traded with a trusted account as a buyer to get your account signed to get the minimum limit lifted. So there's a, a minimum, I think it's uh, 0 0.01 Bitcoin right now. And to get that lifted, um, you have to trade uh, with a peer that already has a signed account. And uh, we introduced it already a couple of months ago, uh, but we, there were some, some minor issues um, that the, the account, uh, the signed account information wasn't uh, propagated properly, properly. And we uh, improved in the last quarter the reliability of the account signing and the account signing process and also introduced features like automated self-signing. So for example, if you uh, have one account signed uh, on your client and you create for the same payment method, for example, uh, another account on a different bank um, and the account details are matching, then the other account will be signed by your account automatically. So that, that should help to, to increase the number of uh, uh, signed accounts available. I just checked before the call uh, our major markets and uh, there are, I would say, also, I didn't count it exactly, but at least or roughly a half of the 
offers um, are made with accounts that are already signed. So there's enough uh, offers available to get your account signed. Yeah, uh, on the next slide, um, Steve already mentioned that uh, our strongest altcoin market is the narrow market. Um, and uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for people trading Monero on, on BISC and also to, to make it uh, as fast as possible. And one thing that was introduced in our uh, last release is um, that we introduced a Monero auto confirming um, for Bitcoin sellers. So the idea is to increase the tra trading speed by doing, by auto confirming a trade um, after a specific number of confirmations. That's of course uh, optional. It's an optional feature you have to turn on in your settings. And if, if you have turned it on and you are the Bitcoin seller, um, you can uh, automatically um, finalize your trade uh, when the Monero is transferred to your uh, address, uh, if a, a, spe a, a specified number of confirmations is reached, uh, you can select, um, define that by yourself in the settings dialog. And we do provide, to, to check this, we do provide a trusted network of Monero explorers for this. But uh, of course, the safest way is to use your own uh, Monero explorer. So that, that was just introduced. There was some minor configuration issues, which uh, should be fixed now with a version uh, 1.4.0, uh, which I'll address later. Yeah, so that's uh, also a, a big feature uh, that got introduced uh, in the last quarter. Yeah, um, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have s huge features introduced uh, last quarter, just a, a couple of them because we are mainly focusing on um, making uh, the client and the trading experience as, as fast and as reliable as possible. And for that, we are focusing on fixing bugs, um, uh, fixing uh, performance bottlenecks. And that was our, one of our biggest focuses uh, in the last quarter. And um, I think it was, yeah, it, it didn't count it um, exactly, but it were at least a couple of hundred uh, bug fixes and improvements. Yeah, um, there's one more thing um, I want to mention, uh, although it wasn't shipped last quarter, but the main, uh, main development uh, took place uh, in this time frame. It's our upcoming release uh, 1.40. It's on the next slide, yeah. Yeah, uh, what can you expect um, of um, version 1.40? Uh, SegWit. So yeah, uh, we finally uh, uh, started to integrating SegWit into BISC. Uh, a big thanks uh, to Oscar, who is working on the SegWit integration and the anonymous donor who was pre-funding the effort. So um, it's, it's a, a big step. Um, it's not just that we are introducing SegWit, we are um, updating Bitcoin J, which is our Bitcoin library, uh, which we haven't updated for a long time. Um, and the first integration is uh, within the BISC wallet. So with uh, version 1.40, you will be able to use SegWit addresses to fund and withdraw funds from your BISC wallet. Uh, in the next version, we'll also uh, use SegWit in our trade protocol to reduce mining fees there as well. So it's, that's a big, uh, a big step uh, for BISC as well. Um, Next, uh, the version 1.40 is uh, packed, uh, really packed uh, with improvements. One is also to, it will reduce startup times um, for everyone, especially for slow connections, as we are optimizing how um, data is prefetched from our seed nodes. Um, it also includes improvements in the trade protocol to make trading more reliable. And it includes, of course, again, lots of bug fixes and other smaller improvements. And actually, uh, you can try out the pre-release of um, version 1.40 already, probably already within the next couple of hours after this call. Uh, binaries are ready. Mm, they just, um, we just have to finish off the, the last uh, and final checks. So yeah, um, you can expect it in, let's say, two to three hours from now on. And 
maybe just one one last thing. Um, it's not. Uh, it won't make uh, it won't um, make it into um, the upcoming version, but um, it is requested every now and then if we are having uh, offering an API uh, to uh, use BISC in an automated way, and we are yes we are working on an API uh, for quite some time already, and it's looking already quite promising. Um, it's not shipped, so code um, that uh, is imp uh, that implements the API is shipped with every release, but it's not um, uh, available for you to use yet. Uh, but if everything runs smoothly, uh, we might get already an uh, early Christmas present this year. So it's uh, hopefully we should have something this year. Um, it looks it looks very promising. And maybe just one one last one one more last thing. Um, uh, we'll also make a, a jump a, a jump to a new Java and JavaFX version uh, in one of the next releases already, uh, which should tackle most of the memory issues uh, we're seeing on some OS setups. We were um, locked down to a certain Java version until recently uh, because of the lack of a of the Java Packager software, which we use uh, for creating the binaries. Uh, that was um, uh, finally replaced um, by uh, the Open J JDK. And yeah, now we, we will move to the, to, new, the new, to Java 11 and we'll use the latest JavaFX version and that should fix lots of uh, issues that we're seeing, especially on, on tricky uh, memory issues. Yeah. Um, that's all from development side, from my side, uh, and I'm really looking forward uh, to the next quarter. There's lots, lots of improvements to come uh, for BISC. Excellent. I don't think I've ever seen more of an enthusiastic reaction from users as I've seen with the, the, SegWit, the SegWit news. So it's the really, really exciting to see that finally happen. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, API, I think API comes up pretty frequently too. So. Yeah, it makes it more comfortable if you're using, uh, yeah, some wallets only um, um, can send to SegWit addresses or right. have, have SegWit addresses and that makes it easier. And of course, as soon as it is uh, included in the trade protocol, it might save us also a little bit on, on trading fees as well, so mining fees as well. Yep, yep. All right, so our next section, presenter, Wiz, I don't believe is in the, the the chat. So we'll hope that he joins soon and can come back and uh, do his part. But the gist of what of this is only one slide anyway, the gist of it is decentralize all the things. So as you can see, the lots of elements of this, um, <coughs> excuse me, were uh, decentralized over the past quarter, over the past couple of months. Um, yeah, I won't speak too much about them. But as you can see these, these, uh, each of these elements of this are quite important, and uh, I think they were the big accomplishments. Yeah, yeah, especially on, on the ops team, lot there were lots of changes over the last quarter on that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we'll hopefully come back to that in a few minutes. Uh, for now, we can move on to growth, and uh, this is the chart that we saw before. Um, not, not too much to say here, aside from it being a good trend. Um, but I do want to revisit this, which is actual Bitcoin volume traded on the network. Um, so this graph is basically showing you the amount of Bitcoin traded on BISC. The black, thick black line is total over the course of the past year. The orange line, dashed line, is altcoin Bitcoin volume and the green dashed line is fiat a Bitcoin volume. And what I want to point out here is mainly that there are two axes. There is an axis on the left, which is for the altcoin volume and there's an axis on the right that's for the fiat volume. Uh, the uh, magnitude of altcoin volume, man mainly Monero volume on BISC right now is double if not more uh, than fiat, total fiat volume across all markets. Um, people often ask why BISC lists altcoins. This is a reason why it's, uh, it's plain and simple, it's very profitable. And 
the reason for that or the further explanation for that is that as many of you may know, BISC doesn't have a company or any kind of investors or anything behind it. It's a, to my knowledge, one of the only freestanding sustainable free software projects with a sustainability model behind it. And so it has to do whatever it can to, um, to attract and earn revenue to sustain itself. And Monero is a big part of that right now. So, um, yeah, I said before, Monero volume hasn't been doing that well lately, which is a part of the reason for the Monero auto-confirm integration and uh, some of the other efforts going on right now. But that is the state of, of volume on the network. Um, now I wanna look at a couple of the, a couple of the bigger markets in specific. So the US dollar, as you can see here, has been doing uh, pretty well, to say the least, over the past couple of months. Uh, Euro has been kind of flat. Monero, as you saw before, was, was going down a little bit. Um, perhaps a little bit more interesting are some of the uh, up and coming markets, in particular, the Brazilian real, the great uh, GBP and the CAD. These are markets that I think are, are very interesting because to my knowledge, no particular efforts have been uh, focused on, I think someone needs to be put on mute. Uh, no particular efforts have been focused on these markets, yet they've been around for months, in some cases years, and they continue to persist. CAD in particular is, uh, I think, to be commended that there's uh, the folks there, I've talked to a number of people in those markets, traders and people who want it to succeed, uh, who persist on making offers and waiting it out and, and, and making deals happen. Um, and so I think we'll talk more about this in a slide or two, but I, I would like to focus efforts on these going forward, these markets to really just, you know, take them to the next level because the interest is most definitely there. And um, the, the enthusiasm, the interest, and uh, in some cases, uh, in particular Brazil, we've had a couple of people pop up on the key base and uh, in other places to uh, offer their help and, um, and really try to do this too. So um, we'll go into how that can happen and, and, and what we can do to, uh, to help those people in a moment. Um, but before we do that, I just wanna go over the uh, state of the DAO. Um, the DAO, like I mentioned, is the, the, the funding and governance mechanism for the entire BISC project. And it's important, I think, to go over how it's been doing. Uh, on the top, we have BSQ issuance, which uh, was doing well until the past couple of months. It's been a little bit all over the place. The main reason for that is reimbursements. So in cycle 15, that big 169 number at the top was a combination of reimbursements for uh, I think one was one big one was for a user uh, who had to go through arbitration and be reimbursed BSQ for their uh, for their loss, and then the other one was for a uh, a mistake that the refund agent made that uh, was a bit controversial. But I think since then the refund agent is limiting his exposure to uh, disputes that are under I believe it's half a bitcoin. I think Leo will go into that uh, in in a few minutes, but um, that's how we're we're addressing that particular issue. And then again, in cycle 17, there were a couple of big reimbursements that boosted that number higher than, um, than it normally would be. And as Christoph mentioned before, we, you know, one of the top priorities of the project is to reduce bugs in the software and other elements of the trade protocol that result in these reimbursements to reduce the issuance that the DAO has to make to make these traders whole. So over time, that number should go down and these issuances should go down. And again, you know, all of that plays into the supply that you see at the bottom. You see it trending up. And uh, of course, that's because of the issuances that, that have taken place over the past couple of cycles, um, which again, hopefully goes, goes down or flattens out as we move forward. But I do wanna mention that the, uh, since the genesis, on mainnet in April 2019, the, the DAO has seen a 17 and some change, about 17% uh, 
um, increase in supply, which is about 1% per month. Um, now, again, I want to reiterate that this is not a direction that we want to see supply go in, but it's also not uh, on a cycle by cycle basis. I wouldn't say it's, it's out of hand or anything uh, crazy. We have since uh, the past uh, about five or six cycles, maybe more, the early part of this year, we've implemented strict budgeting and priority prioritization to limit issuance, at least for compensation. And a big top priority, again, has been to reduce reimbursements and dispute, res dispute cases to reduce overall uh, issuance. Uh, so, uh, Christophe, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, just a note to this, to this speed the reimbursements, so if you're not familiar, it's not that uh, this reimbursement, this PSQ is uh, printed and um, the, the funds, funds are lost. So the, the, the funds are sent to the donation address, uh, which um, is, is our trusted role, and which then in the, uh, again buys up a BSQ on, on the market. So it looks like the, yeah, we have this big peak because of the reimbursement, uh, but um, yeah, uh, the, 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 comp also the, the Bitcoin that it's tied to this reimbursement, it's, it's still in the, in the, in the BISC system. It's just on the, on the donation address and uh, it will be it will be taken to to burn and bsq on the market so it's it's not that we are we are printing a lot for this reimbursement as so we, we do create bsq for reimbursement cases but there's also more buying power to to get out uh, this uh, created bsq uh, from the market as well that's why we we're seeing not huge uh, increases in the total BISC supply bsq supply yeah <clears throat> that's a very good point and just for, for folks i think to, who, who might be new to the concept it might be worth reiterating that yeah bsq is issued and it's burned it's not your typical uh whatever token that's issued once and keeps going around and around it's very much a supply and demand based uh, mechanism where uh bsq is constantly well it's issued every month when cycles end for compensation and reimbursements and then it's burned throughout the cycle afterward uh, for trading fees and um, other fees. So that's a bit on the DAO. Now I want to go into growth itself. Over the past couple of months, um, it's been a lot of operational stuff is mainly what, what's been accomplished. Um, the website was essentially overhauled, at least all the copy and text on it to um, encourage better conversions. Uh, the design was, well, better conversions and better, um, more clear, frequently asked questions. The design was slightly over, was slightly uh, revised to also enable better conversions. Um, just simple things like the download button wasn't as clear, that's been fixed. Um, the workflow for translations was automated. So before this was kind of a, a, an oversight on my part, the uh, translations workflow was a bit disjointed. So the translations were happening on TransFX, but they were not being, uh, I guess, propagated to the website. That workflow has now been automated and uh, the, the process for, for people to contribute those translations has been made more clear and documented. Internal budgeting has been improved. Um, so I mentioned uh, that a new budgeting structure was put in place uh, earlier this year a process to automate parts of that was put in place over the past couple of months. So compensation, compensation requests are now uh, structured so that a bot can read them. And once the requests have been approved, automatically put them in a, a format that can be read by a spreadsheet so that team leads can more effectively allot budgets and plan for priorities and initiatives in the upcoming cycles. That's mainly an internal tool. We have an external tool in progress right now that will be, I think, on the bisc.market website. Uh, that's in uh, development right now, but the plan is to show uh, cycle by cycle budgets, as well as uh, issuance, where that issuance went, and uh, details on the DAO. So what the impact of all this budgeting and issuance has on the DAO. 
uh, VSQ supply and things like that. So I think that'll be the final piece on uh, the final part of making all of this work that we've been doing to um, add discipline to issuance uh, to make that more transparent. So look out for that coming in the next, uh, the next cycle or so. Um, other things, we've uh, been a little bit better about publishing. So we published a couple of videos on, I believe it was Twitter and other places, uh, short ones on features. So we did one for the auto-confirm, XMR auto-confirm feature. We did one for the self-signing uh, feature that was released a couple of releases ago. Um, a handful of uh, blog posts, uh, one in particular that uh, was meant to um, put premiums in context. Uh, that was a kind of a deep dive on the major markets and how premiums on BISC are not as high as commonly thought. Um, I think it's important to note that, you know, 0.01 Bitcoin or less, yeah, you'll be, you might be paying five, six, seven percent on average, but for anything after that, anything bigger than that, you probably are paying closer to one or two percent, if not less. And that's across markets, USD, Euro, even XMR, um, even CAD, which is not traded as much. You would think that it uh, might have higher premiums, but that trend holds true even in that market. GBP, same thing. So um, other small things we did, uh, we established a hat tip contribution uh, mechanism. This is designed to, as a smaller part of uh, an initiative that I'll be going through in the next slide to encourage uh, people to contribute uh, to this kind of on their own um, to, uh, I guess the bigger idea is that this growth in the best case scenario will be happening across the world. Uh, many people, many countries, and it's just not going to be possible for, for the DAO to sustain, fund, and manage all of it. And so um, the hat tip contribution is just a small part of, uh, of an incentive to encourage people to do things uh, on their own, things that they think of, creative ideas that may not necessarily get funding from the BISC DAO itself, but that may be worth trying out um, independently. Uh, so, so far we've issued, or we've, we've I guess you could say awarded uh, two people this, this uh, contribution so far. One was for a, um, was for pu pub publishing an article in a well-known Spanish uh, website. Another one was for a, uh, a thorough, an unbelievably extensive uh, article on the Czech retailer's website, Alza. Um, it, was just, it was just so exceptional that it was something that, that's actually what originally inspired this hat tip contribution mechanism. It was uh, just wanted to figure out a way to uh, recognize people who did things like that and uh, perhaps encourage more initiatives like those as well. And the last thing to mention here is HTPP, uh, the Hackers Congress in uh, Paralimpolis in, uh, in Prague took place, I guess about two weeks ago now. Uh, so Chris Beams gave a, delivered a workshop there, which I believe we're still waiting on them to upload, uh, but it was recorded and we'll uh, make that available as soon as we can. Um, there's also an interview done uh, there by a handful of BIS contributors that uh, you might find interesting. So we'll, we'll also link to that when we can. Upcoming initiatives. Uh, this is what I just kind of mentioned, um, wanting to ramp up. So with the operational piece, I think in place, website cannot be translated efficiently. Wiki cannot be translated efficiently. Um, small things like we have a growth metrics channel now in Keybase to monitor growth on a daily basis without having to go anywhere. Um, with these things, these, these uh, pieces in place, I think it's, it's a good time, uh, especially with the momentum in markets like the BRL and the CAD and the GBP to really put forth some, um, some market, fo market focused initiatives. And the way I want to do it is like I said, lots of people um, in a best case scenario across lots of geographies. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it, it's 
it makes sense for any one in particular to be a bottleneck. And so in uh, going in that direction, in that interest, uh, wrote a BISC growth handbook. You can access it at the link here. This presentation will be, of course, made public right after this. And this handbook goes over everything. It's a full-fledged summary run-through of everything that's been tried and attempted to grow BISC since it started. So there's links to GitHub issues where uh, of previous growth initiatives. There's um, ideas for initiatives like merchandise, um, you know, making decks and templates to enable other people to present BISC at meetups and, and webinars. Um, there's a copy ideas, there's user personas, there's everything that you can need. There's tips that we've gleaned from people who've tried to start new markets in other countries, tips and tricks that they've learned to, to make that more successful. Um, it's a huge, I think it's like an eight or 10 page document that can cover, that covers pretty much everything. Um, and the idea there is that as we reach out to people, like I mentioned before, there's a few people in Brazil who are have expressed interest in helping uh, same thing with CAD, same thing with CNY. Um, and we'd love to see additional initiatives in GBP and XMR, especially. Um, it's impossible for any one person to know what will work in another market. It's the people who are actually in the markets who uh, they're trying to start and launch that really need to come up with the strategies to do that. But it's hard if they don't know what's been tried in the past and what's on the table, what's really possible, what's been tried and what uh, can be tried. Um, so that document I I'm hoping will serve as a, as, a, as a launching pad for people who are interested to, um, to formulate their own strategies and, and put them to the test. Um, so link is there. I'll be talking to people in the next few days about getting started on the markets I mentioned and anyone else who's interested is more than happy, more than welcome to, um, to check it out um, and, and uh, see what's there, make suggestions for the document itself, if you'd like, or um, you know, use it as a basis for your own initiatives. So that's the big item there. A um, Couple other things, documentation, uh, as you may know, we're trying to move from the docs.bisc.network uh, website for documentation to uh, the wiki. So the wiki was rolled out and announced on the last call. Um, so it's been out for a while, but it's been just chugging away. I mean, people have been adding articles over the past couple of months, use cases, um, articles on privacy, using BISC with cubes, using BISC on, uh, on tails, all kinds of things. Um, lots of useful things there. Um, but we're continuing the effort to uh, really finally move everything else um, from the docs website to the, the wiki website. Um, so that's an initiative that's, that's, uh, that's ongoing, um, as well as the last thing mentioned here, uh, overhauling the text within BISC to make it more clear, more intuitive in what's going on, as well as adding links to the, uh, to the software where appropriate to make things more clear where they're not so clear. So we're hoping that's gonna help with better on easier onboarding and um, yeah, to take out some of the confusion for, um, for people as they go through the trade process. So I think that's it for, for growth. Leo, would you like to take, uh, take on support? Hi, hi guys, how are you doing? Uh, my screen and my video is not working properly, so I'll just leave, uh, leave it uh, down. Um, okay, so I'll start with the challenges that we faced. And uh, first off, the fee reimbursement agent, which is a role that I took earlier, uh, back when Chris was um, active. Um, we've had a number of issues, uh, but we managed to overcome, overcome with Thomas helping me. Um, but lately, the, there was a certain specific issue where I would have to, for every cycle before I did made the payments, I would have to go to each individual trade and look for the, in case the fee was paid in BSQ and make, make sure the address was changed to 
BTC and then make the payment to the Bitcoin address. But if for some reason for this last cycle, um, the, the address that were appearing on was what was supposed to be a BSQ address, it was BTC. So essentially, the, it didn't have to be changed. And it seemed that it worked. But for some users, the address, they seemed that it never, the payment was never got there. So, so what I'm doing is this for until it gets solved with Thomas, because I haven't heard back from him. Um, what I'm doing is just telling people to put down the preferred address so that I make the payment correctly. Then um, I figure that's just the the easiest way to go through for now. Um, so, other, so other issues that we've been having with the support channel are so with the support um, team with sell and Revolut payments. So Revolut, obviously we figured that the username was much easier to make payments and there was less trouble and that obviously worked. And then with sell, we saw that some uh, transfers were being flagged for some reason. And, uh, but now it seems it's getting better. So that we've, we've had less and less issues with that on that front. And um, so our biggest issue obviously is unresponsive sellers as, uh, I think Christoph talked about. Um, so yeah, so the, the main issue with, with unresponsive sellers, um, I mean, it's not only that we don't know why they would lose their deposits because some, some of these trades are actually, they're, they're quite considerable, um, but it's that, you know, the user is waiting for well, 10, 15 days. And in some cases, the seller comes back and then confirms the trade. So even though they've waited for 10 days before it goes into arbitration, they don't even get their deposits from the other party. So that that's happened in a few cases. And, you know, that, that's obviously an objective that, that we have to solve in the short term. And um, the next one is confirmation delays on the mempool. And that is something that Wiz put on in his report. And I think, I believe it was cycle 16. And yeah, there obviously was some delays and they were, they were causing disputes to happen um, just because people were impatient that they weren't getting the payment or they couldn't confirm. So average of 100 mediations uh, cases every cycle, more or less. And then the refund agent mistake that uh, Steve talked about. Yeah, and he did um, limit his payout to now to 0 0.5 BTC, as you said. And... Um, so I've, I've been talking with him. It's sometimes hard to get grab him because he he doesn't answer always straight away. But he he told me that after September the we'll we'll go now in a bit more of the numbers. But um, it's been reduced to a one percent of all the mediation cases. So that's pretty low. I mean I don't know how accurate his his numbers are because I don't know if he knows all the mediation cases that are happening now. But he just says one percent, which is great, which means they're going down by a lot. And um, and then the frequent question and answer uh, questions that we talked about making a page. Obviously, that's pretty much been solved with the Biz Wiki. I mean, now people are you know solving all the questions much better. And then I mean, obviously with Keybase and Telegram. Uh, okay, can you pass to the next one? Okay, yeah, so this is a little summary that I made of, with all the mediations that we have and how it's structured more or less. So half of it is unresponsive party. And so, and pretty much half of them never get back and then they have to be reimbursed. And then, well, not half, I would say like 30%. And then delayed payments, they're, you know, 70% of the unresponsive parties that are, that are causing the, to dispute it in the first place. And then on the other on the other side we have like bugs, which I considered banking issues and BIS bugs that are you know failed trades or, or whatever. And um, that's it a bit the summary that I got from all the reports of the different mediators. Yeah, can you pass on to the next one? Yeah. So this is the number of cases that have been going upward, but I think in proportion to the the increase in number of trades so it's, it's pretty stable right now and then arbitration also similar trend um 
but according to well we'll see on the next cycle how it does but according to the refund agent they've dropped considerably so i mean that's always good news um yeah can you pass on to the next one yeah so this is just a statement that i got from the refund agent when i asked for some feedback on how the last quarter went by and yeah so he said just most of them are disappearing traders um most of them fear traders but they exist highly yeah and then a few cases come from from key base and seem not to react via the application yeah i mean the same issues we've been having i think in the side of the mediators we've not had that issue that much the the problem with messages not arriving i think that's um i mean i i haven't had in my case any users come to me and say hey i sent a message but you, you didn't get it um so i think that's way better now and uh, yeah can you pass on to the next one yeah so the current state uh obviously the summary is that the biz wiki is being really helpful um telegram and keybase their daily questions i i answer i help like three users almost every day um and then handling the fee reimbursements that i'm still doing and that's i mean it seems like it's going well except with the one user i talked about before um yeah so we coming as a mediator and we're stepping down and and so also one thing that i'd like to mention is the i'm interviewing uh possible new interns for the support team and um so ba basically so that you all know what i what i do is anyone that comes um and asks to be an intern i just um ask a little bit about their background but not much just to know where they're coming from and then and then all i do is just like tell them to walk me through a uh, trade in bis like everything that happens or anything that could happen in a trade and uh, and when they do i basically you know that it's all good for me but um so essentially anyone that's, that's passed the test is now working for the support team and anyone who hasn't there you know this probably because they didn't answer they didn't get to me back or that they made some critical mistakes and i just told them hey like first learn the process well and then we're, we're you're more than welcome to come and help um but i think that that should be at least like the baseline like knowing how every single process in the support team works um yeah so i there's currently one applicant that in that i'm talking with and yeah, I mean, if he is willing to help, I'm more than happy to have him. Um, obviously, I don't know if this is how it should be done in the future, but for now, I guess I'll tell them to make a, a formal, like a formal application in GitHub. But um, but yeah, yeah. So can you go to the next slide? Oh yeah, yeah. So that's that's it from my side. Well, cool. thanks, Leo. I'm glad you went through that. I think uh, we've had a number of people ask about how to become involved with support. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. All right. So that's, I guess that's it for, uh, for our team lead function based overviews. Wiz didn't show up, but uh, yeah, I think his slide was pretty straightforward. Anyway, and uh, yeah, time for Q&A. These links before we get into that are uh, just links that you might want to know. Um, key base is where the project tends to handle all discourse. Uh, there's a master projects board here that lists all the, uh, the top initiatives of the project. I think mainly development related, but overall, uh, also linked is the growth handbook that I mentioned that has everything. If you're interested in contributing to growth, any, any kind of growth related initiative, make sure you check that out. I think it's, there's, there's a wealth of uh, information there. Um, and then at the bottom is the, the BISC wiki for anything and everything else. So yeah, with that, I mean, there's, uh, as you saw, lots of, lots of activity on development, lots of activity across the project, uh, and we're looking forward to the next, uh, what the next few months bring. So anybody have any questions, comments, suggestions? And feel free to type in the text uh, chat as well. Keep an eye on that. So 
Okay. You have one more minute. If not, it's fine. We can uh, end the call here as well too. All right, quite a bunch today. All right, well, we'll we'll call it a day. Chris, do uh, you want to say something? Um, Ronin is asking on update oh. on the uh, to the notification app. Uh, is it about? Uh, can I? Okay. Um, at the moment, it's it's developed natively uh, in Objective C, um, so it's 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 tricky to to easily port it to to Android. So. If 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 a developer shows up um, taking taking it over, I don't think the functionality is a lot, so that the UI is quite simplistic on on the iOS side. Um, yeah, and it should be quite similar um, for for the Android side. But yeah, unfortunately, it's not. We haven't implemented it in any any tool tooling that can easily export uh, iOS and Android apps. So Android is old app. Do we have an Android app? I, I don't think so. Yeah, there's an Android app, but the problem is that it needs Google Play services to work, which is most, a lot of BISC users don't, don't have that. So it doesn't really work that well. But um, just as a comment on that, um, there was a user, a BISC user, Informaticist, I think is his handle. He, um, he made this cool thing, he, he basically, made a script that just reads the BISC log file and sends a signal message or a key based message every time it finds a trade action, uh, which I thought was really cool. And he's not even a, I don't think he's a professional programmer. It was like his first shell script and that's what he did with it. Um, really cool. And I kind of refined it a little bit to, um, to add more functions. So I, I don't know, like, I don't know how robust it is. It's it's kind of hacky, but um, I'll put the code out for that in uh, shortly. So that I don't know, maybe it'll help you or other people who can't get notifications through the uh, the native apps on mobile. Anyone else? Oh, chat. Okay. Will SegWit be applied to Bitcoin transaction types in the next update, both trade deposits and withdrawals? So Christoph, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's just withdrawals and deposits for now. Yeah, yeah that's for now. Also, if you want, so you can't uh, external fund the trade directly um, um, to a SegWit address at this point, that will be possible in, in, in the, next or the release afterwards. So, so the first, first iteration is just for, for our wallet um, to be able to um, yeah, fund or withdraw um, to SegWit addresses. Okay, yeah, just as I just responded in the chat, but yeah, to answer Ronan, the, uh, the, that script does handle chat. It handles chat messages between traders, between mediators, arbitrators, and all the associated actions. Arbitration open, mediation open, mediation uh, result. It should handle everything uh, that you would want to know. But again, I don't want to. I don't want to speak too highly of it. I mean, it, it is a bit hacky. It probably needs some more testing, and, and I don't know how robust it is overall, but. I'll put it out there so you guys can test it out. Yes, yeah, so there's a comment in the chat about the best price index. That's all Wiz. Fortunately, he's not here to talk about it, but it was, I think, a big accomplishment for him. And uh, CD2357, who was a big part of implementing that. Uh, so all credit to them. Yeah, okay, so I guess we can uh, end here. I just wanna say, some, uh, since Patsa is here, uh, I just wanna say that uh, he provided some great feedback as an active trader or offer maker uh, recently over the past couple of days. Feedback like that is, is excellent, really helps us 
well, not me, but developers to uh, prioritize updates and improvements. So it's much welcome. Anything else, Christoph? You good? Uh, no, not on okay. my side. All right, well, that concludes our quarter three update. We'll have another one of these next quarter. And yeah, follow the BISC account on Twitter and join us on Keybase for further updates in the meantime. And thanks everybody for joining. Great, thank you very much. Bye. Bye. All right, bye-bye.